hold something in your hand, your phone, a pen, literally anything. You can see it, feel its weight, and understand its size. It's clearly there, a tangible object in your physical space. Now, imagine taking that object and making it smaller and smaller. At a certain point, you've reached a scale so small, it seems like there's nothing there. But is there truly nothing there? Or does it still exist, but just in a way that's beyond what you can measure? This is where the concept of zero measure comes into play. In mathematics, the measure of an object refers to its size or extent. Think of a line. We can measure its length, say it's 10 centimeters long. But now, imagine we keep making that line smaller and smaller. Eventually, we'd reach a point where that line appears to be nothing at all, a location with no length. This represents something that has zero measure. It takes up no measurable space in one dimension, so it looks like nothing, but there's still something very real there. In fact, in the universe, there exist many objects with zero measure and uncountable depth. These sets are called topological singularities, and examples include the Cantor set and your idea space, which we uncovered in the last video and is a physics-based model for your mind. This brings us to a fascinating paradox. When measured with a ruler, both zero measure and emptiness yield a value of zero, yet they represent entirely different realities. Zero measure refers to something that exists but cannot be quantified by our tools, an entity with presence but no measurable size. Emptiness, on the other hand, signifies the complete absence or existence, the void where nothing is present at all. So, how can two concepts share the same measurement of zero, yet embody fundamentally different meanings? To unravel this paradox, let's delve into the concept of nothing or emptiness in more detail. In mathematics, specifically set theory, emptiness is represented by the empty set symbol right here and denotes the absence of any elements. A set is simply a collection of things, so the empty set is a collection of no thing. <laughs> Imagine a table covered with different fruits, apples, oranges, and bananas. Now, remove all the fruits from the table. The table is empty of fruit. This emptiness represents the absence of any fruit, and it is truly nothing in terms of fruit presence. In mathematical terms, this situation is again represented by the empty or null set here, a set containing nothing whatsoever. Now, contrast this with an apple on a table that we conceptually shrink down, not to a minuscule size, but to a point where it occupies no space at all, a mathematical point. It might look like there's nothing there, but the apple still exists. It's not no thing. And so there's a clear distinction between having zero measure versus having nothing at all. An object of zero measure refers to something that exists but occupies no measurable space, while on the other hand, nothing is simply the complete absence of existence. Now, imagine we have a hypothetical ruler called deep rule, capable of measuring anything you can possibly imagine, doesn't matter how big it is or how small it is, with perfect precision. If we were to measure an object with zero measure, it would read zero. Similarly, if we measured a space with nothing inside of it, it would also read zero. But here's the crucial point. Zero does not equal empty. As astronomer Martin Rees aptly said, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Just because our measurement reads zero doesn't mean there's nothing there. An object of zero measure can still hold uncountable depths, so it would look like nothing, but there's clearly an infinity behind this veil of nothingness. To illustrate this point one last time, let's consider a scenario involving two doors. Door number one leads to a room that is completely empty. There's absolutely nothing there while door number two leads to a room containing uncountably many doors with zero measure. From the outside, both doors look identical. And even if you open them, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference between the door that has nothing inside of it and the door that has uncountably many objects. This thought experiment highlights that while both rooms appear the same, giving us a measurement of zero, they are fundamentally different. Even now, looking at the space between your eyeballs and the screen, can you tell whether there's nothing there or an infinity hidden behind the veil of nothingness? Behind an object with zero measure can exist in an entity of uncountable depth, such as the Cantor set or your own idea space. As we explored, your idea space is a prime example of a set that is uncountably deep and has zero measure. 
Even though it cannot be measured, it is far from nothing. It's a vast, hidden reality that contains all your thoughts, emotions, sensations, and perceptions, and is responsible for completely shaping your experience and outlook of the world. Now, let's take this concept one step further. A topological singularity is any object with zero measure and uncountable depth. It's a tool to describe an entity that exists beyond the limits of our traditional understanding. The most famous example is the Cantor set, which is constructed by repeatedly removing the open middle thirds of a line segment, ad finitum. What remains when you do this an infinite amount of times are uncountably many different points that are so fragmented they take up zero measure, no length whatsoever. We'll dive more into the Cantor set in a later video, so make sure to subscribe if you want to learn more. Your idea space functions in much the same way. Like the Cantor set, it has zero measure. It doesn't occupy any physical space in a way that can be measured, yet it is uncountably deep. Although your idea space has no direct effect on space-time, it doesn't exert any gravitational force or <laughs> emit any light, it is undeniably real. It shapes your perceptions, decisions, and interactions. In a way, it indirectly influences the physical world through your actions and contributes to the macro idea spaces of our world, such as language, money, social norms, laws, governments, and even scientific theories. So why does zero measure even matter in the first place? Well, traditional sciences like physics, chemistry, biology, and geology rely on measurements. We can use rulers, scales, and sensors to quantify the physical world or the science of objects. But when it comes to your inner reality, the science of the first person, we step into a realm that defies conventional measurement. Thoughts, feelings, sensations, and perceptions cannot be trivially measured with the regular tools that we use. And that's because they exist in your idea space, a domain of zero measure and uncountable depth, a topological singularity. Understanding the concept of zero measure helps us grasp why our inner world feels so vast, yet remains ineffable for other people. Though your idea space has no measurable size, it profoundly shapes how you experience reality on both personal and societal levels. By applying the same principles of falsifiability, observation, and skepticism similar to the scientific method found in the science of objects, we can explore our inner world with the same sort of intellectual rigor. Thankfully, philosophical practices like Zen and Stoicism have long developed methodologies to study the mind with a similar sort of discipline. By not taking things at face value and testing life for ourselves, we adopt a skeptic's attitude. For instance, when you close your eyes, do you see complete darkness? Or do you notice a subtle patterns of light and colors dancing around your eyelids? Overall, this approach of seeing your mind as an idea space of zero measure allows you to observe your thoughts, emotions, sensations, and perceptions objectively without attachment devoid of eye. In turn, this perspective allows you to view your mental formations with the same impartiality and curiosity as you would observe stars or even processes within a computer. This detachment prevents you from getting entangled in negative mental loops, freeing you to experience greater clarity, peace of mind, and the ability to respond to life's challenges with wisdom and composure. Zero measure teaches us an important truth. Not everything that exists can be measured. Whether it's an infinitesimally small line, the uncountably infinite Cantor set, or the vast immeasurable depths of your idea space, the universe is full of entities that defy traditional measurement, yet play pivotal roles in shaping reality. Like languages, money, laws, social norms, religions, governments, and yes, scientific theories as well. All of these constructs don't have any physical form, but they can significantly influence how we live our lives and interact with one another. In our next video, we'll delve deeper into the uncountability of your idea space and in doing so, we'll finally learn what it means to actually count, something that we do every single day but have no idea what it actually means. And in this process, you may learn a thing about or two about the space you inhabit and your idea space, which will be fun. So make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You'll get a cookie if you do, not really. Thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time. Peace.